Let's get you sound. From Everfree Network. And you're listening to the EPS show. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode 80. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Daniel Anthony. Oh, hi, Norman. Hi, Daniel. How are you? I don't know. Pretty okay, pretty bad. Don't know what to say. Oh, okay. I've been... Back to school, so yep. Uh, the spirit. You know, you will get to meet your friends, but you got homework, that kind of thing, yeah. Mm, true, true. I've been... It's probably the last time in my life as well, because of the final set. Mm, true. I've been seeing you playing a lot of Saints Row on the PC, so releasing stress? Uh, yeah, because I can't blow my campus up, I'd rather blow a whole city up instead. <laughs> wow, that's excellent no- logic. So, okay. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to see me in the headlines, so yeah. Oh, we all do, we all do. I'm all over, I'm, I'm all over steel part, if you want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Alright then, so anyway, joining us today is James Cork. Hey there, Norman. Hey there, Dan. Hey, hey James. Hey James, hey James, how are you? I am sitting down looking at my PC and drawing ponies, so that's always good. Awesome, yeah, awesome. Welcome back. <laughs> thank you, thank you. It's always it's a pleasure to come back. It's like uh, it, this feels like home. It, it's like oh, that's so awesome. I don't know, and I'm with these guys, um, be silly for a couple of hours. True, true. Yeah, almost. You're always well, almost. That's not right. You're always welcome. You're always welcome. <laughs> <laughs> almost welcome. He's like half welcome. How's that? Oh, you're well. <laughs> no, no. I, I'm oh, just being derpy. I'm just being derpy. I'm well. I'm well. <laughs> How are you? One when you come well. down. The- when you come down to Malaysia, we need to like meet up and do this live episode thing. <laughs> true, <laughs> like, true. See, like, wonder how James Cork draws and attends a podcast at the same time. Find out how. <laughs> <laughs> so James, uh, I recently heard that you discovered a new game for Pokemon. What was it? Oh, you're talking about Pokemon Ghost Bastion. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I just posted it on Tumblr. It's basically you go to uh, you get yourself an electric Pokemon, then you load up on Ultra Balls or Pokeballs or whatever you you have. Then you go to an area that has a lot a lot of uh, ghost type Pokemon, like a haunted mansion or uh, one of those towers that is full of uh, gravestones. Which, by the way, Pokemon gravestones. Jesus Christ, <laughs> that, that's kind of creepy. And then you, every single Pokemon that comes into your path. Uh, that is ghost type, you weaken, paralyze, and then you capture it. Pokemon Ghost Bastion. Awesome, that's a cool game. I wish I had a Game Boy or whatever device to play on. Sorry for a second, it was sure. like a fandom crossover. I'm pretty sure somebody else has come up with that, but eh, I felt like if nobody has, there you go. First. <laughs> so anyway, our guest for this week is Sketchy Song. Hello. Hey there, Sketchy. How are you doing? I'm doing quite well, thank you. Awesome, awesome. So for those out there who might not know who Sketchy is, he is one of the DJs for EFN. Am I right? Well, I I, I wouldn't say DJ uh, so much, because uh, DJ is basically the... That would be someone who sits there and spins the, uh, spins the tunes, so to speak. And I am actually a live performing artist. Oh, yeah. I heard from Dusty saying that you play live music on your acoustic guitar, something like that? I do indeed. And these days I have more than just a guitar. My my collection of instruments is ever-growing. So these days I have, like, guitars, mandolins, a bass, ocarinas, all sorts here. Okay, cool, cool. So uh, how many can you play at any one time simultaneously? <laughs> uh, so far, two. I can play my guitar and uh, a harmonica simultaneously. Ooh, okay. We'll, we'll save that later on. We'll save that for later on. Because yeah, I thought you could go full Pinkie Pie and go Paris by Polka and everything. And no, no, no. Working nobody. up to that. <laughs> yeah, like this dual guitar and there's a mandolin on the left hand, guitar on the right hand. <laughs> You're hammering everything. Oh, boys. That would so, be kind of chaotic. <laughs> anyway. Well, that's perfect then. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, anyway, let's move on to, well, the four important questions. And question number one is, who is your favorite pony? Well, that's a difficult one to answer. Um, you allow multiple choices. Depends. I make up your mind. Okay. No, okay. In that it's case, not difficult. I will have to I say will. rarity, and that's it. James, <laughs> uh, uh, that's 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 your favorite pony, not not mine. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. 
And here we go. So, as far as ponies go, as far as background ponies go, um, my favourite pony would be Octavia. And that will come as no surprise at all to anyone who's familiar with my writing work because, well, I wrote a little while back... Well, it's probably about a year back now, but I wrote a, well, it's about 172,000 word fic, which has Octavia in it, so that kind of is a bit of a giveaway that he's my favourite among the background ponies. Um, among the main six, I would say it's a toss-up between Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy. Um, I love them both the bits. And among the... Uh, among the royalty, so to speak, then it would be... Luna. It's kind of it's tied between Celestia and Luna because, I mean, this is the thing. Um, although a lot of people really, really love Luna's bits, and I'm no exception, I also really, really like Celestia's character as well. Um, I like the way that she's characterised as, you know... I, I see her very much as, one, a caring big sister to Luna, and two, uh, very much a caring and benevolent ruler. I, I really don't like the thing when people are like, oh, she's a tyrant. It's like, that's stupid. She's not. True, true. So, yeah. Okay. Did you read the newest uh, micro oh. focused on Celestia? I, I, oh yes, I, I read that. Yet. I I I I'm behind on the comics, so don't spoil anything for me. Oh, it's good. I'm, I'm it's just good. Read it last night. <laughs> I'm not going to, but if you like Celestia, uh, you definitely need to check it out. It's actually pretty good. Yep, yep. yep. There's a lot of character references. <laughs> oh yes, Norman. Oh yes. Yep, yep. I'm not talking about uh, that one that you like. I'm talking about the other one that's grumpy. Wait, I'm the grumpy one, so... No, not you. The other one. Fine! It's not all about you, Dan. <laughs> that's what makes me grumpy. Yep, it's all about Sketchy now. And Sketchy, what's your favourite episode? Favourite episode? Ooh. That, that again, is a difficult one. Um, Multiple choices allowed. Yeah, I would have to say, well, without a doubt, from season one, my favourite one, hands down, is Party of One. That was the first episode where I actually... That's where I re- like really fell in love with Pinkie Pie's character, because we finally got to see into her head a bit, and we saw that, you know, actually she's, you know... Currently. There's the, well, it's a case of, you know, there's not just... You know, there's a sort of maybe... Um, deep-seated yes, desperation behind her actions, behind her you know, being so happy and cheerful at times because if she's not, you know, involving herself with other ponies, if she's not got friends around her, then she gets really, really, you know, depressed really fast. Mm-hmm. Um, as like, you know, I, when we finally got to see like that, that deeper side of her, it's like, wow, you know, there's actually a lot of depth to this character. Um, from season two, it would either be less than zero or uh, the, the finale. And season three, I think... Mm. I'm trying to think, actually. I'm trying to remember the episodes from season three I liked. There wasn't really an awful lot there. Mm, there's only half a season, uh, so... There's only yeah. half a season, yeah, so it's difficult to pick. Yeah. I I hope uh, season four brings a lot more awesomeness. True, true. I heard it's 26 episodes, so yay! It yeah, better it be. It is. It's going to be a full season. That much has been mm-hmm. confirmed. True, true. So, you don't know what's your answer for season three? I honestly can't really think of one. Um, let me actually just have a quick look at the episode list for season three, and I will give you an answer for that. Funny enough, I don't really remember much about season three, because I've only watched all of season three once. Really, guys? Yeah. You don't remember much of season three? Yeah, I don't really much. I mean, the episode where Scootaloo Christ- and Luna the were... Crystal em- yep. Yep. Yeah, it's the Crystal uh, Empire, too many Pinkie <clears throat> Pies... Uh, the episode oh, yeah, the Ham and Flutter on, the Discord return, the Trixie return, yeah, and the Luna Inception thing. Yeah. Yeah, but still, the Discord High Nightmares. I think out of season three, then, probably my favourite would either be Sleepless in Ponyville, because I really did love the way that all panned out. Oh, yeah. Um, that or Too Many Pinkie Pies, because again, it was some more Pinkie Pie exploration, and that's always a good thing. Oh, okay, cool, bye, cool. Bye, bye. Give me a second. Yes. Carry towards the end. True. Give me a second. Did. Which one? The, the Pinkie Pie one? If you are not the real Pinkie Pie, you get sucked and explode into smithereens. <laughs> yeah. No <laughs> second doubts about that. Yeah, okay, I gotta, I gotta admit, I was pretty freaked out at the end. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, was, it was really scary. Oh, it's, I can't um, make a face crazier than this. 
nightmare fuel. True, 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 true. So, Sketchy, how did you become a fan of the show? That was an interesting thing. Because um, I... The, the way I learned of it to begin with was... I am the head administrator for a Sonic fandom message board. And one day, I noticed in our more nonsensical form, I noticed lots of pictures of ponies turning up. And I was like, okay, that's a little odd. Probably just some fad or something that will pass, give it time. But it didn't. Just, you know, more and more pictures and threads kept on showing up. And I was like, what is going on here? So eventually curiosity got the better of me. And I went and did some research, looked into, you know... I was like, okay, what is going on here? Like, and found out, you know, My Little Pony is being, you know, brought back with a new look, new series, and so forth. I was like, okay. And I was like, and it's like, and people are obviously enjoying this. I was like, let's have a look then and see what this is all about. So I went and found the season one premiere and watched that. And I was like, okay, that's actually, you know, fairly okay. I was like, you know, that was better than I expected. You know, I went into it with fairly low expectations and was quite surprised. So I was like, okay, let's have a watch of the next episode. And, of course, the next episode is Applebug season. And, you know, to find out that it, um, you know, to see that they went to, like, Slice of Life after having, you know, adventures, like, I can, I can live with this. I was like, this is actually pretty good. So then I watched the episode after that. And then the episode after that. And then a few hours later, I'd run out of episodes to watch because this was not long after season one had started. And the latest episode they were up to was the one just before winter wrap up. So I was suddenly out of episodes. I was like, oh. Um, <laughs> so I was like, I, I should keep watching this. And then when, when winter wrap up, you know, hit, when that came out and I saw it, I was like, okay, this actually is really amazing because that was the first episode where we had a full-blown song and dance number. And I was like, this is something that's not done in cartoons anymore. I was like, I'm definitely going to keep watching this and see if they do this again because that was actually really, really amazing. That's how it all starts, really, with anyone. If you have a passing interest and you watch it, like how Apple Cider said, it's the three-episode trap. Once you watch three episodes, you have to watch the rest. And once that's done... Yeah. You'll be a fan. Yeah, pretty when, much. When did you have that revelation moment that you're watching the episode, then it ends, you have to, to take a step back and say, what is wrong with me? <laughs> when was that? <laughs> um, I would say that was maybe after, I don't know, probably about halfway through season one. Um, you know, when I'd been waiting on like the next episode's coming out. I was like, in, I just watched the most recent episodes and I was like, I just kind of thought to myself, I was like, I'm watching a show for little girls by <laughs> choice. <laughs> dang, 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 dang. Like, and I just thought to myself, you know, why am I doing this? But, you know, the answer came to you pretty clearly, you know, pretty promptly when I asked myself that question. I was like, because I'm genuinely enjoying this. And I was kind of shocked to think that. I was like, you know what? I was like, I can either choose to, you know, think of this as something shameful that, oh, I'm watching a show for little girls and enjoying it, or... I can just take the more mature approach and be like, you know what? Yeah, I'm watching this show and I'm enjoying it because it's damn good. I have to agree well, with that so. mindset. I have to agree with that mindset. I agree as well, heavily. True, 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 true. Yeah. And Sketchy, what do your family and friends think about your love for the show? There have been mixed reactions. Mm-hmm. Um, both my parents know about my being involved in the community because they've either... I've either just told them or they've found out. Um, my... My mum, for example, I think she found out um, not too long after I'd first gotten into it, and then when Buck happened, that's the Brony UK convention, uh, I basically said to her, oh, I'm going to be going down to this convention in Manchester and uh, being a guest there. And she was like, well, what is it about? And I was like, I was like well, actually, it's about, the, it's about My Little Pony. And she's like, is it now? And I was like, yeah. She's like, okay, fair <laughs> enough. Um you know, and I took the time to say to her, you know, it's uh, the reason I've gotten into this in the first place is because it's actually really, really well done. And, you know, she took my word for it because my mum is good like that. She she knows I have my head screwed on the right way. So she's like, well, you know, if if you've taken an interest in it, then there has to be a good reason for it. I'm, I'm not going to judge you for it, I think. So, um, <clears throat> my dad, on the other hand, I think I might have mentioned it to him at some point, but he hadn't really paid attention. Um, 
<clears throat> but he got a proper revelation of it when uh, I visited him recently because he actually recently had a stroke, Ooh. Um, which was rather unfortunate. He's okay, though. He's, he's recovered. Good, so he's fine. But Good, uh, it was when I'd gone and visited him and... Um, oh, yeah. And the subject somehow came up, the, the new My Little Pony shows, the subject somehow came up. I think it was one of his um, one of his students brought it up who was visiting. This is the thing, he was a driving instructor. Oh. Um, so he was visited by, you know, his students and so forth while he was in the hospital. And one of his students had mentioned it. Said, so they'd mentioned something about the season two finale. Um, and they mentioned something about the changelings. It's like, oh yeah, that's the season two finale when the changelings invade and so forth. And Kind of like everyone else in the room sort of looked at me as though to say, why do you know this? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> so I was like, um, she was like, yeah, she was like, how do you know? I was like, oh, I'm a, I was like, I watched it myself. I'm, I'm a well-read boy. Was like, <laughs> and the other guys were like, oh, okay. And my dad just sort of was like, oh. <laughs> but I think, you know, he's just, you know, kind of accepted again. Because, you know, you know, both my parents are aware that I am not one for just taking interest in things, you know, lightly. It's a case of something has to be good to get me interested in it. So they're like, fair enough. So, um, both of them know. As for my friends, um, most of them, again, have been fairly accepting of it. Um, I have, I have had a few disbelieving looks and a few, you know, a few responses to the effect of, what? <laughs> but I haven't had anyone, you know, disowning me or whatever just because I like a, a show for little girls um, most of them have been pretty cool about it and a good note and some people actually that I've told about it have then watched it themselves and been like you know what this is actually really good I'm going to watch it as well so I I have been responsible for bringing some people into the herd so to speak <laughs> that's awesome uh, I, I don't know how to react when you're in a room and you say something that nobody expects you to say how would that yes. be <laughs> I do that all the time. Oh, but that's you, really. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, nobody's surprised. Yes. Sorry? Uh, I was going to say, uh, it, it is a bit oh, of a weird thing when you come out with something and everyone's like, what? You know, it's like you get that sort of look of everyone sort of slowly turned to you with this bewildered look on their face. No, uh, it's kind of comical, though. I, I kind of like doing that to people. <laughs> no, the thing is, I, the, the, the thing I'm thinking right now is, one of your father's students talk about it. Uh, was it a boy or a girl? Uh, it was a it was a girl. Ah, uh, so that's why the strange looks. Okay, no wonder. Yeah. To bring up the subject of uh, your friends disowning you because of that, if they do that, they are not really your friends. Oh, true, true. Your yeah. friends will accept Very you, true. whatever you watch and whatever you like, and they shouldn't be judgmental on you. True, true. You know, some people found the Brony fandom as a way to out those who are loyal and those who aren't true uh, for my yeah. side I haven't had any well, any of those problems because honestly speaking most of my friends here like crazy anime stuff and whoa and most of their stuff are pretty weird so comparing to ponies <laughs> you're weird yeah <laughs> that's simple my friends didn't only they saw me wearing pink eh, no comment so anyway, thanks Ketchy for answering our four important questions and let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is housekeeping. So we here at MBS Show love playing video games and we really like to help in a charity event. So how could we do so? Well, as of November 2nd, most of the MBS Show crew will be participating in Extra Life 2013, a 25 hours gaming marathon to raise money for Children's Miracle Network. What to expect during that 25 hours of gaming marathon? Well, expect to be a part of a live stream with me, your host Norman Sanzo. You can even join me in a game and possibly see me rage at a game. I did that recently with Indiana Jones. Interact with the guests and uh, in the live stream and get your questions answered by them. We would appreciate it if you could donate to our team. Together we can help kids and kick cancer's buttocks. Links to the donation page are in the show notes. So yes, we are doing this. Seriously. 25 hours of gaming. Oh god, please help me. <laughs> so, yeah, you, you brought this on yourself, no? Like, indeed, but... No, no. Okay, James, you, you could help me here. Because um, you, you watched me play Indiana Jones, right? 
<laughs> you were not having a very good time with that game. <laughs> However, what a, what a weird thing to complain about. Oh, no, I have to play 24 hours of video games. <laughs> no, no, no. no. More problems. I, I don't understand this. Why did you people subject yourself to self-abuse? <laughs> because we like it. Oh. <laughs> Oh, okay, right. No, no but, but seriously, oh, um, it is all good. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, no. but... <laughs> no, but seriously... No idea what that was. No, no, but seriously, it's for a good cause. And 25 hours of gaming for a few bits, it's no problem because it all goes to the kids that need it. And if I can entertain you by torturing myself, hey, yo, do it. So I I'm hope... waiting, I'm waiting. Yeah, so I hope you do come and join me because I be I'll be participating and I'll also be doing a test run with my live stream to see how it works with the quality and stuff. So um, it'll be every Wednesday. My local time is going to be nine till ten or maybe nine to eleven, depending. Your your time would be a.m. I'm not sure if there's a good time or not, but hey, join me. See me rage at Indiana Jones. Um, greatest adventure. You to play other games, right? Oh, we'll do, we'll do. Indiana Jones was just for Lion Heart cartoon because he knows a lot of indies and, well, who knows? Uh, well, hoping he would comment, but hey, it was fun while it lasted. My next game would be something more new, more fun, more current, maybe? Maybe like, what was that game? Ellen Wake, yeah. Play Super Mario 64. <laughs> oh god, I do. I, uh, I'll see what I can do. I'll see what I can do. Oh god, no. <laughs> so, anyway, I hope you guys can join us and let's move on to the next topic. And next topic is news time. In today's news time, roll that dice. It's time for Monopony. <gasps> nope. <laughs> see the pun there? See what I did there? <laughs> yeah, so, so, anyway. Monopony or, or perhaps Ponopoly. Yep, in, <laughs> I was thinking about that one too. Let us not introduce capitalism into the beautiful state of Equestria. Hey. I'm sorry, capitalism is already in stale, in stale on Equestria. Didn't you see the Apple family? True, true. Let it dry. So, anyway, in a previous episode, we mentioned that a pony version of Monopoly will be coming out soon. And it appears that the board game is out in stores now. The board game features elements from the show. The landmarks have been ponified. The minifigures are of the main six, and even the community chess and chance have been changed to Discord and Mare Mare. You can get your own set at retail stores and online at Amazon.com and Toybiz.com. Links can be found in the show notes. So who here is excited for this board game? I am. I am very excited for it. I love I... Monopoly. And I honestly, I'm surprised it took Hasbro this long, considering that they essentially own both properties, like, you know, My Little Pony and Monopoly. I'm just kind of shocked it took them this long to finally get together a pony version of it, because it's the fans have been crying out for that for, like, the past two or and three years almost. And one, of the, and one of the best things in this version of Monopoly is that they do have the places of the show when in, like, I've seen fan-made versions where they actually have the characters. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that's that's not as much fun as buying Sugar Cube Corner or uh, Pinkie Pie's, not, or Sakura's Hut. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, and it's so cool. By the way, I think that Mayor Smear uh, card should be a uh, chance, not community chest. No, I think uh, it's... No, but it's, it's like this, you know, your, your money is either going to the devil or to the government. There's no way out. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens. No, no. It's more realistic. True, true. Uh, but no, uh, sketchy. I, I think the only reason why Hasbro didn't do it to begin with because of the fandom. During the beginning, they did not know what to do with us. And to do something yeah. like this was kind of risky. Just think of how many Monopoly games are out there that didn't went well, didn't go too far because we have a local version of Monopoly here and I don't think no anybody's bought that one. I play it. You play it, but do you own it? Yes, I do. Really now? Yeah. Is it fun? Oh, yes. Oh, okay, cool. Monopoly. But no. And I own the old Malaysian Monopoly. Ah. Before the Putrajaya installment was, it was there, you know, it was old names. It's like, yeah, I have the bit situation. Mm, okay, that's interesting because... From what I seen, there's a Street Fighter version, there's a Doctor Who version, there's a there, there's there's a lot of versions out there, and oh, even a Power Rangers there's version. A Pokemon version. 
version. Really? It's a Pokemon yes. version. Yes. The oh problem my. with making a Monopoly game is whether the IP that you're going to use for a Monopoly game has actually got sufficient world building on it to, to translate well into the game of Monopoly. Um, and I suppose for a while, Pony didn't. But it mm. has now, because you've got... <laughs> You know, you've got assorted places in Ponyville, and you've also got places in Canterlot. So I think there is now enough there for them to actually manage it. Mm, true. So maybe that could be another reason why they waited. True. But, and also the demand of the fandom, and the fandom is quite big right now for them to yeah. warrant a pony game. Yes. Yeah, and it has a bigger demographic now. Like It, it now ranges all ages. True, true. Because Monopoly is not only played by, by kids, it's played by... People of all ages, and they all can sit around and play with their ponies and just steal their properties. Oh, well, that is true. Yeah, that is true. true. Did anyone? Uh, uh, no, I'm pretty certain all, all of us in here play Monopoly. So yeah, at we're, one point of my life, days. yes. Did you guys remember that the? It is an old story, but way back when there's this Monopoly competition where the winner of that game um, got the exact amount in dollars. Yep. Wow, wow, wow. There's only awesome. so, so much money in the Monopoly game. True, true. Mm-hmm. But no, he did won in dollars. Like, he beat everybody and he got the amount in dollars. Like, if he won, right. like, 10k. But then again, US, in the US Monopoly, the lowest denomination is $1. Yeah, true. But I'm, it's, I'm just saying that this was did ha- this happened a while back now. And just imagine if they did that for charity for a... Uh, Brony, sorry, for a convention or something like that. That would be Buy awesome. Head, bro. What are you talking about? You know, no, they will be bankrupt, trust me. No, I mean, it will be for charity, and charity is always good. Did okay. you hear that way to uh, beat Monopoly without too much of an effort? How do? It's, um, I want to beat like a I need to know. It's like, a, it's like a cheat. What you have to do is buy the properties that are red and orange, because it's proof that uh, the chance of the dice... They are going to make you fall on those properties all the time. So if you buy those and you buff them up with uh, houses and hotels, you will have people falling on those all the time. And if you see the Monopoly game, you will see that the red properties are like Sugar Cube Corner, Sweet Apple Lakers, and another another store. And I'm like, that is so clever. <laughs> like, you take control of the food. <laughs> and I think yes. that's true, because uh, when you roll two dice, the maximum you can get is 12. But however, instead, if you know you roll a D14, if there's such a thing, the chances of a D14 rolling any number is equal. But in two dice, the highest chance is rolling is a 7. True. That is yeah. true. Dice logic. Yep. Jeez, the Hasbro, the Hasbro dudes are... But I don't think so. there's a D14. There's a D12, a D20, and a D... No, there's a hypoth- hypothetical D14 that was tested to against two dice, and it, sh- it showed that the two dice are more biased to 7. Mm, true, true. But anyway, um, people are not interested in hearing us talk about Monopoly because it does not have any ponies in it. So let's move on to the next topic. And well, now it does. Yeah. <laughs> true, but not in what we're talking topic, about. Gentlemen, let's talk more about Monopoly. Yep, yep. So anyway, Dan, why, do you, why don't you take this one? All right. So, My Little Pony Firefly, is she going to have her own book? Over again on Amazon, a new listing for a My Little Pony book has popped up by the title of My Little Pony Firefly and Illustrated Book. To be included in the book is a Firefly brushable with a star-shaped brush. How the heck does that work? The book is 32 pages long and will be available for purchase on April 22nd, 2014. Links, as usual, can be found in the show notes. So, Firefly, do you think this is legit? I don't know. I, th- I thought they lost the rights to 20th Century Fox because of the Josh Whedon show. True. That's that- kind of weird. I know. This is well, confusing. Although well, um, maybe in, in literature they could they could bypass that right. True. I, I I don't know. It, it's just that by name and by figure and stuff is already a problem there. And Firefly G One, from what I know, is not licensed or not trademark, right? Don't know. Uh, Firefly G One is all oh, the whole name. I don't think it's trademark. No. Mm, so but then again about the art it's stuff, a tricky thing I just read um, uh, sorry go ahead yeah I was going to say it's, it's a bit of a tricky thing I would say that if they're bringing back well if, if they're going to have Firefly for something 
I'm all for that. Um, I know also, uh, I mean, this is the thing, Firefly was basically Lauren's favourite. Mm, like, true, true. Little. So I think that's rather nice of them to put the effort into put Firefly into something. Mm, true, true. But a brushable, and okay, technically if you want to do a brushable or Firefly, it's not that hard. Just put a pink no, pony out there with a th- two thunder shape cutie mark and blue mm-hmm. mane, then you're done. And change her name to something else, but still. Fly fire. Yeah. But so then, wait, wait. Uh, a thing that I'm a little afraid of is that it says Firefly and Illustrated. Now, I just read um, My Little Pony Under the Sparkling Sea just a couple of days ago. And as much as I know Sparkling that there sea. is tons of, tons of effort and precision done in making the artwork for the book, I didn't like it. It was a flashback to G3. What was wrong with it? There was, oh, you know, the, the artwork was very reminiscent of G3. And it, it kind of like dragged out the whole um, feel of the G4, the cuteness that I liked in G4. And it was more like, it, you know how with G3, how they tried to make the ponies look cute? Yeah, it had that feel to it. Mm, you know, glittery hair, glittery manes that were a little too detailed rather than Pinkie Pie's mane that's designed in Flash that cannot exist in real life. Mm, I see. Okay. I completely agree with Nan on this one. I absolutely agree. I saw the artwork. I saw the time lapse of the artists working on the pic- on the on the drawings that they they took a lot of time to do them, but they look horrible. I think it's I one mean, of three. Yeah, no, but they, they do look horrible. They do have a very a strong feel to Generation 3, Generation uh, 3.5. And I don't mean those generations are bad. I just mean it's like taking a step back from what we have right now. Yeah, and exactly. evolution, is, evolution is always moving forward. So I'm not saying that Generation 3 was bad. I'm just saying it was a step, a step to get to Generation 4. Mm. And also, in a sense... Um, they, ha- they brought back a lot of old things. They brought back sea ponies. Well, I don't know. It added more characters to it, but with the art and stuff, it's a style that you can't really blame anybody. It's just an art style that somebody decided to use and Hasbro cleared it. Yeah, I, I totally understand, but you know, it's um, compared to the IDW comic, it was... Well, because I read the Celestia miniseries, then I read that, then I was like, no, this doesn't feel right. Well, it felt like I was reading a G3 comic. It, it was a storybook, though. It was, it was, a, it was text. It had text. It was an illustrated storybook, but it did feel like I was reading a G3 comic. Yeah, different style and different medium, really. But I, I don't want to harp on that one because um, talking about Firefly here, I just hope that it is really Firefly, and we get to see what they do with her. Well, if you see the pink body, the blue mane, and the bow on her ponytail. Then you're going to, on the, on the wings, of course, then you're going to see it's Firefly indeed. Oh, awesome, yeah. awesome. And let's move on to the next one. Next one is the 2013 Hasbro Investor Day. Recently, Hasbro had their 2013 Investor Day, where they publicly announced their earnings and their future plans. The website tfw2005.com had coverage over the event, and here are some of the pony-related things, thanks to EQD for the breakdown. Ponies overall, IDW, on its way to 1 million comics sold. A signature clothing line is coming out, debuting in Paris. Which has leaked a little, in fact. Yeah, true. Chuba Chups, on the way for ponies. Chuba Chup is a lollipop brand. Go look at it. I have not personally tasted one before. but You haven't tasted a Chuba Chup? No. Nope. I cannot believe oh, that. I cannot believe that. I, I don't... Can- you I, haven't lived if you haven't tasted you haven't. Pinkie Pie would be ashamed of you. Yeah. That is like the best thing ever. Yeah, it's like... I don't it's know a candy stick. It's a candy on a stick. Yeah, I know, it's I know. Spanish invention. Did, did you know that, that the, chupa, the, the chupa chips is actually Spanish? Really? Oh. Yeah, I've always is. wondered about the name, but I always loved it so much. The, the logo of Chupa Chups is actually designed by Salvador Dali. Ooh, that's cool. Ah. Nice. So anyway, um, mm-hmm. let me let me I move on. It's so hard to read. Let me move on before we <laughs> <laughs> let's move on before we um, talk more about that. Uh, My Little Pony at forty three percent on franchise brand revenues. Little Spec Shop and My Little Pony tied for most watched shows on the hub in the demo. 
sorry, sixty seven percent of girls in Spain watch My Little Pony. Oh, in, is, there, is there an age breakdown for that? Mm. I have to say something on that. What? Okay. I'm not I'm not sure about the little girls, but I can tell you all the grown ups that I know of. They don't watch the show in Spanish. Oh. They don't. <laughs> They, 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 yeah, we watch it in English. The dub they did for My Little Pony in Spain is horrible. Oh my! I I was I was watching the the perfect the perfect stallion song in uh, in Spanish. Spanish. They don't rhyme. <laughs> they didn't make it rhyme. It uh, it's a literal translation. They didn't make it rhyme at all. I know. Yeah, it's kind of difficult to both make it both uh, lyrics and visuals work. But if you put a, li- a little bit of work on it, you're gonna be able to 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 make it sound good. Like they did translate it Winter Wrap Up, and Winter Wrap Up sounds okay in Spain. But oh god, no! I, uh, really so I am like, to do the, the, the translation. I'm taking that stat on the on the chart as not completely accurate. <laughs> In Brazil, MLP is the number one show in the girls' demographic. 70% of all girls watch it. Okay. MLP apparently dominating the world with Transformers. And the last one is MLP is one of the most popular shows streamed for girls. Explain what you mean by MLP is apparently dominating the world with Transformers, because that doesn't sound very friendly. I think what he means by that is that My Little Pony alongside Transformers is donating... Uh, TV ratings and so forth. True. And toys and all that. Okay, because I don't want a Twilight Sparkle piloting Optimus Prime into my house tomorrow morning. <laughs> Why <laughs> no. not? I would totally watch that. I want that. <laughs> no, but... Like, why can't you not... How can you not want that? Oh, come on. No, she's reading the manual. You know what we should have, guys? Here's what we should have. We should have Princess Celestia and Princess Luna and Optimus Prime versus, like, Discord and Megatron and so forth. Awesome. I would watch that. No, oh, but... Brothers yeah, High makes best friends with Mumblebee. Yeah. No, no, but... but it's like, if they're dominating the world, so if they're going to step on my favorite restaurant tomorrow, I'll be like, you better thank God I like Dicky Pie. No, no. But no, the, the thing is with this one is, um, it's just a brand blueprint success because... No, no, I know, I know. It's just the way you wrote it. It's like, apparently dominating nope, the world. Like, not, oh, not me. It was Seth. So the thing is, Rainbow and RC became best friends, and they go racing together. Oh, that's that's so much fun! But no, um, My Little Pony in Malaysia is up by two hundred forty percent. How do you go up that high? As bro, you're welcome. Yeah. Yeah, but anyway, for we. Love all of us here in Malaysia. Now please update the goddamn website to G four. Shush. <laughs> but anyway, wow. anger. I know. This is what I have to work with. But anyway, if you want more anger, we got the Quest Girls. 360 screens sold at launch and 21 million impressions on the theater. Most successful launch of its kind by Screen Vision. Triple the estimate on Amazon. Links can be found in the show notes. And looks like MLP is going places. Yeah. Can you? As we can. Well. Yeah. We should stop for a second and just. Consider what Equestria Girls did cinema-wise, because I don't know the budget of that movie, but compared to what it did in the theater with how much it costed to do, I'm pretty sure it's like uh, one of the most uh, financially successful movies in the of the year. <laughs> true, true. Probably is, probably is. That is true. It probably did, it probably did like three or four times the amount of money that it costed. <laughs> yep, yeah, you is... know, Hasbro, if you sold the DVD in Malaysia and all the other countries, you probably would have been in Pacific Rim. No, I don't know. Oh, Pacific God, Rim is still know, awesome. I'm pretty sure it actually did. <laughs> <laughs> well, when it comes if... to making up the money that it cost, that Pacific Rim did not. Yeah, I know. if you want to talk about earning back money, Pacific... I'm sorry. Um, the Equestria Girls overall gained hand over fist. Hand over what? Hand over fist. You know, the term hand over fist. Oh, sorry, my English sucks. Yeah, could be me. But no, um, Equestria Girls, even though most of us don't like it, it still brings a lot of cash to Hasbro. And I don't I know, like I don't say that... Well, as long as the people got DHX got paid, I don't mind, because they did a good job with taking instructions and making the best out of it. Oh, true, true. From what I can tell, Hasbro has been really earning a lot, and 2014 seems to be a good year for them. 2014 hasn't started. It's going to be a good year for them. 
It's well, going you know to what be. happens when a company is doing a lot of money that they can spend more money on their shows, True. meaning that the more money we give to them, the better quality is going to season four, is going, season four and season five and season 27 are going to have. Mm, true, Either true. that or they're going to just blindfold themselves and push a random button that labeled reboot and see which series they're going to do next. Ah. You know what? With the current generation, I don't think they want to reboot it because... No, any have... other series. There could be any series that out there that's waiting for a reboot. G.I. Mm, Joe? G.I. Joe? Joe? Yeah, be a good thing. Uh, yeah. True. I, I, I think it's a series and they have to pay Bruce Willis every week. No, they don't have to do that. They could just ask Nolan North to do something. It will cost money. Yeah, no, you just have to hire Steve Bloom and he will do every single graph <laughs> wave battle Saxon ever and he will be awesome. True, true. Then they could go up higher and have Michael Bay on board. Oh, no, 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 no. Stay away. <laughs> stay, stay away. <laughs> And then he'll you know what? The, trans- the Transformers will come in as well, and then it'll be like G.I. Joe Transformers. Yeah! That you know has what? happened I'll, in I'll comics. Rather have, I'll rather have the real Michael Bay doing it than a Michael Bay uh, wannabe. <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll, just, they'll just infuse and cross over Transformers and G.I. Joe, and then, you know, some dude will be flying the plane going, Time! That's not a word! What's going on? Uh. That's not a word! <laughs> But anyway, anyway, um, with this, I have to say um, Hasbro has done a good job. And if they keep doing what we like, we might spend more money on them. That is true. Well, I know I am going to spend my money on Hasbro products or Hasbro licensed products. <laughs> IDW, keep on making comics. I'll buy them. Anyway, let's move on before Dan gets more depressed and I get more stressed out. <laughs> yep. We do this every week. How the hell do we survive? I got no idea. So anyway, um, to relax, my darlings. <laughs> that voice. So anyway, we'll it's harder than it seems, boss. Anyway, on to the next topic, and the next topic is guest time. In today's guest time, we have Sketchy Sounds. He is an awesome. <laughs> hey, look. he is an awesome guy. He. You sure he's a guy? Yep, he is a guy. He has a show on. <laughs> yeah, when. <laughs> You know what, Dan? He's a guy, though. <laughs> That's not the question. Would you like me to show you evidence? <laughs> uh, no, you, you please show me your ID card, please. <laughs> okay, you, you know what, Sketchy? Um, mind, ex- mind, mind telling who you are and what you do for the people who might not know who you are and what you do? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so my name is, as mentioned, Sketchy Sounds. Um... I am an artist, a musician, a writer. Uh, I have a regular show every Thursday on every network where I do a two-hour set of live acoustic music. Um, I also draw ponies fairly often, and I have written quite a few fix, some of which are released, some are still being written. Uh-huh. I am also, I should mention, the co-author for Ask Britannia, which is the official mascot Tumblr for Burning UK Convention. Ooh, that is so cool. We've got another, we've got another all talented dude on board now. True, 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 true. They can do everything. <laughs> that is cool, that is cool. They need this black griffin because he can start qu- start quizzing us on whether he's a girl or a guy, we still don't know. We're going to seek verification after the show. Oh, God, no. Oh, God, no. <laughs> But anyway, Sketchy, thanks for <laughs> thanks for coming on and questioning our uh, sanity. I'll go get my latex gloves. <laughs> oh God! Uh, well, uh, well, at sanity. least questioning my sanity. I, I think I'm going nuts. Shut up! I'm bent over. <laughs> oh God, no! Now I'll just give you a bar of soap. See how long you hold it. <laughs> you know what? How did it end oh, up like this? Dan, you're a loose cannon. You're a loose cannon. Welcome to the final semester of university. Oh, God. You you thought that Chef Sandy was a loose cannon? You should come to our show. It's even more looser. Where do you think Chef Sandy learned it from? Uh, not from you. <laughs> Certainly not from okay, you. Let's, let's take a moment, settle down. And... Mm. Yeah, true, true. Uh, focus, focus, focus. Yes, yes, yes. Let's hey, anyway, the <laughs> anyway, sketchy. Thanks for coming on and... Oh, um, well, I would say this awesome show, but I think we're going insane right now. But anyway, thanks for coming on. Well, awesome and insane. There's, there's a fine line between the two, and sometimes they blur over into each other. 
it's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I mean, I've, I've talked with you guys once or twice before, and James, of course, um, is a friend of mine. In fact, should, do you think we should tell them, James, about the, uh, the rather interesting circumstances in regards to how we became friends? Because that is quite a fun story. Yes, please. Well, what are you talking about? I don't even know you. I don't even know who you are. What is Where am I? Where am I? Who's oh, no. Who's your okay. You know, uh, you so. know, Sketchy, you have a much better voice than me, and this is about you. So you tell the story, and I will pontify anything that you might forget. Though I doubt it, because you have a good memory. <laughs> okay, so basically, how me and James became friends. James wrote a fic a while ago um, called, what was it? Cloud Odeon. Cloud Which, yeah. Yeah, so it's quite a good fic, in my opinion. He always says it's awful, but I disagree with him. Um, I read that fic and was quite moved by it, to be honest. Um, found it to be very well, written, very well written, despite, you know, the odd flaws here and there in terms of, like, grammar or spelling or whatever. Um, it still was very well written, and I quite liked it. So read that quite some time ago, and then... After some time, found that it was also on film fiction, so I was like, oh, I should contact this author and say hello. So I left a message basically gushing a bit about how I had appreciated this fic and so forth, and how a friend of mine had as well, and also how it had lent quite a bit of inspiration for the characterization of Octavia in a story I had then written myself, which James still hasn't read all of. He needs to get on with that, and you should all pester him to do it. Anyway, um, <laughs> I have to so, right. Yeah. Moving on a bit from that. Um, so we got talking a bit. And I was like, uh, oh, you should, um, you know, we should maybe talk on Skype. So he was like, yeah, okay. So we added each other on Skype. And it was then that we noticed something interesting. Because he was like, wait, your location's Dundee. And he was like, and I was like your, your location's Dundee as well. I was like, you're in Dundee? And he's like, yeah. He's like, um, I'm actually currently working at this, uh, this pub. And it turned out this particular pub that he was working at, which he had actually been working at for the past several months, was literally just round the corner from where I was living at the time. Whoa. And I was like, you were right round the corner from me. I was like, we should hang out. <laughs> and he was the even... So we met up. This is the even funnier bit, was um, he didn't realise who I was at the time. Um, so we met up and wandered back to my place. And then we went into my room and he was like... And he had, had suddenly had this moment of realisation. He was like, wait a minute, where have I seen this before? And then I sat down and he was like, oh, you're sketchy <laughs> sound! <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Do you know I mean, that if moment? You, if you imagine to the pub with that voice that you used on us just now, I'll be like, who's this dude? <laughs> Did you imagine that moment in um, either Unbreakable or The Sixth Sense where uh, you are suddenly told, oh my God, that's the twist of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you are like, oh, that was me. That was my expression. That, that's how I took it. I was like, oh my god, yeah. <laughs> this is sketchy sounds. Like, yeah, he was like, oh my gosh. I was like, you did not realize this up to last. <laughs> my, and then there was a further the... bit. Of, there was a further bit yeah. though. There was a further thing like that for me because I hadn't realized up till then either that he was the author of Ask Movie Sleep, which was something I'd already been following. So there was a bit of a double moment of that twist. Because like, wait, you do this? He's like, yeah. I was like, oh my god. So, oh god. It was a little fanboy. It was adorable. Uh, yeah. I could just see why does so, that happen here? I don't know. So we we became pretty good friends as a result of that. Yes, we hung out quite a bit, and then he eventually had to head back to Spain. Um, yeah. But we we've, uh, we've stayed in contact since and uh, remained pretty good friends. To pontify a couple of. To quantify a couple of the details in the story, uh, I started working on that pub at the same time season three was starting. And one day coming back from the pub is when I saw the message. And I saw it by pure chance because I was like, I'm tired, I'm stressed out. <sighs> it's been forever since I went into film fiction. Let's see. Oh, hey, new message. Oh, hey, sketchy sounds. Oh, hey, seems like a nice guy. Let's add him on Skype. And the rest, co uh, it's... Uh, completely matches a, a sketches uh, side of the story. Wait, James, I, I, I'm a bit blurred here because you know he, you know his name Sketchy Sounds, but when you met him and talked to him and stuff, you did not realize he was Sketchy Sounds? Brain fart. That's the case of... That... 
you go I think it was a case of he didn't realize I was that sketchy sounds is the thing. <laughs> Well, no, it's, uh, here's the thing. I am terrible for names. I suck at names, but I am good with pictures. So I remember locations, places, and faces, but I don't remember names. Ah, so okay. I, I did watch the song cast a couple of times, and I really enjoyed it. And I, the, 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 the image of, the, of the, the room and the setup, all that stuck, on, uh, stuck to, my, to my brain, but not the name of the song cast, not the name of the song caster. So could, that's why when followed. I saw it, yeah. Oh, okay. So you could have followed him all the way back to the apartment. And you'd be like, do do do, yo, sketchy, got a visitor. <laughs> 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 no, but but still, this is. I would say this is the most awesome story about friendship I've ever heard, and this is really cool. I, I wish I had that moment. And I miss hanging out with Sketchy because now I am back in Spain, and I'm like, oh, I could have hung out with him a lot more times, but nah. Had to okay. be stuck in that in that cursed pub for like twelve hours a day. <laughs> it was a terrible mm. job. Uh, it didn't say. It's twenty twenty. Mm, true. Were but, you working and studying or something? No, I was just working, trying to uh, trying to start uh, from scratch, but things didn't work out, so I had to go back. You know, like okay. you go out of your you go out of your country, trying to find a place in the world, and then things don't work out, and you have to go back with your tail between your legs. That's pretty much what happened. Oh, okay, okay, but yeah, uh, never mind. You you have Just your chance later. Like, you, 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 like, you have your chance, but no, uh, sketchy. Talking about your show, um, where was it again? It's on Everfree Network. Um, which I'm sure most of you will be familiar with. And I go on every Thursday at 9pm mag time, which currently is British summertime, but we'll be switching back to normal UTC stroke GMT um, at the end of next month, I think. Uh, but, I mean, this is the thing. If you go on every network's main site, you can actually set your local time zone there, so it'll bring up the show times in your local time zone. Um my show goes out at a time which I think is mostly friendly for both overseas audiences and European audiences, so most people should be able to catch it. Mm, okay. uh, and I do usually upload the recordings of the show onto YouTube afterwards, although I've kind of been forgetting to do that recently, so I'll need to remember to do that. <laughs> right. oh, okay, okay. Let me have. No, but yeah. still, um, so how does your show work on EFN? Basically, what happens is um, I go on and I usually do, I warm up a bit, do a few songs, and then I just take requests from the people in the chat. And I have an assistant who basically um, sits there and takes down a list of all the requests that come in. And then um, we usually do them in the order that they've come in, but if there's like, if there's stuff that gets really popularly requested, then that will maybe get bumped up a bit mm. and I'll do that because a lot of people want to hear it uh-huh. um, likewise if there are people that request something then you know they have to go before the show is over I will try and fit their request in before they have to go um, but yeah mm. and I sing songs from both the show and from within the community I've covered let's see I think most of the well known Brony artists I've covered at least one of their songs because I've done I've done stuff by Feather, by Tombstone, by Eurobeat, by Forest Rain, by Mando Pony, by Acoustic Brony, by Maybe Aviators. Pony? Pretty much you name a well known Brony artist and I've probably either heard or been asked to do one of their songs or have done one of their songs. Uh, okay. That's interesting. When you say this, like, I think you're the one who should have been working in a pub, like, with the musician there playing the guitar or something. <laughs> Sadly, musicians over here do not get anywhere near as much recognition as they do in other countries. We really, really don't. Oh, I think musician over like... here is, is not lucrative. Okay. You should move to Spain. We do care, take care of our artists mm-hmm. and other people's style. artists. You can start a pub, Brody pub and then, like, you take Brody music and everything will be, like, awesome there. <laughs> No. But that's not cool because a pop is good because you know violence and people throwing pints on their faces <laughs> and all that. Too really uh, over tolerating for a pub. It, yeah. it wouldn't work. True, true. Hey, Did wait. that happen in your pub? <laughs> Actually, yeah, a couple of times. Oh my! It was um, a pub in Scotland. Of course, it happened. <laughs> It was, it was a pretty shady situation. We had to deal with it ourselves. We couldn't call the police because of reasons. <laughs> so 
I cannot tell lies. <laughs> oh, okay. No, but, but uh, you, can, you, can, you can just learn out some bar fight songs, and when they're when they're fighting, you'll be like joining in, like hey. But no, no, no. Um, <laughs> uh, you did say request, right? So, um, if I understand right, um, you have something with James, um, with requests. Is that right? Uh, oh, that's that's a sort of a different thing. Um, but yeah. I mean, when I say requests, I mean like requests for songs. But what you're on about there, that's also in regard. That would be in regards to art, because currently I am trying to get some funds together to get some better equipment. Um, there's essentially this thing I'm trying to get my hands on, which would allow me to one. Um, it would give me a, a quite a few more avenues of creative expression, but two it would also allow me to really, really easily put together tablature for songs that I've played and songs from the show, which in turn would be very, very useful for anybody guitarists out there. Um, and with regards to that, where James comes in there is he basically said for every $5 that gets donated to me, then he will happily do the uh, the donator a ultra-quick sketch, which is something yep. I started doing recently. Ooh. Yeah, it's a kind of commission that is super quick. It costs like five. It, it's literally five bucks. It takes me ten minutes to draw it, and it's called U- Ultra Quick Ink Sketch uh, Yuki's for a uh, short name. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so far, I have had a, quite a few people asking me for those. They are fun to do. I don't draw just ponies. I draw uh, uh, furry comic characters, movie characters, etc. So, uh, yeah. And for every five dollars that get donated to Sketchy, if you want one, I will draw you one. This is awesome. like busking in the twenty first century. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> like, well, how would busking be moved into the twenty first century? It's awesome. Like, you can do it online. <laughs> yeah, pretty yeah, much. something like that. Yeah, that, that sounds awesome. So, um, well, I think I should do that too because it sounds cool, and I would like to support that. So, you want awesome. the music now? No, uh, I want this. I want the drawing. Okay. <laughs> no, you want to okay. start doing. You want to start doing music at five dollars, and like, I can't play an instrument, so I'm just gonna sing. No. Just <laughs> <laughs> gonna say if you if you toss me five bucks, then you can get one. Sure, sure. Um, do link it the show notes um, because I will add that there because it is a really good cause and it's an interesting way to earn money. Yes. So you you play live music. So what do you play? Like what instrument do you play? Primarily, it's guitar that I play. Um, I've, I mean, this is the thing. I've been playing guitar since I was about six years old. Uh-huh. So that's over 20 years of experience playing. Um, but I also have a selection of other instruments in my room, which I will occasionally pick up and play. Uh, like, for example, I have a mandolin. That's the thing. I was recently sent a mandolin by one of my friends. Well, fans, I should say, from Norway, because he was basically like, look, I have this mandolin that I never play. And he was like... And you are obviously trying to learn because you've got one there. And the thing is, I do. I did have a mandolin already, but it's not a very good one. It goes out of tune really easily and quite quickly, and it's very annoying to play. He was like, I've got a mandolin that I'm not playing. Uh, he was like, would you like me to send you it? I was like, yeah, okay. So he did, and I now have this much nicer mandolin, which also has a pinky dice sticker on it, which is a, <laughs> a, a nice added bonus. Um and it is a lovely instrument. It's so much fun to play. It keeps in tune really easily between sessions, which is definitely a massive bonus. Um, and I really want to yeah, try a mandolin. It, I've always wanted to. And it has, as I say, it has a lovely sound to it as well. Um, I've recently been learning to play Art of the Dress on it. Uh, which oh, is wow, that's got a sound I just really need nice. To play the, would you like to hear? Oh, maybe, yes, yes. Maybe, you know, maybe later but, on. Maybe later on, during the end of the show. Because it's like, oh. the mandolin is like this perfect marriage of a guitar and a harp, if you ask me. That is the best description I've ever heard of a mandolin. <laughs> I'll tell you something weird, though. It's weird playing a mandolin when you've been used to a guitar. Because the strings on a mandolin... I can tell. They go in the, they go in the opposite direction from a guitar. Because in a guitar, you have E-A-D-B-G uh, for the strings. On a mandolin, you also have E-A-D-B-G. But it's E-A-D-B-G from bottom to top rather than top to bottom. And it's like, yeah. what? <laughs> Yeah, I would just switch hand because I'm left-handed. Though it does mean some chords transfer easily, quite well transfer over quite easily because you're just doing the same shapes but upside down. <laughs> Wait a minute! I thought it was, I thought the mandolin was G D A E or something like that. It is. 
but I'm saying it it from the bottom string up to the top rather than the top string up to the bottom. Oh, because, okay, yeah. right, I see. <laughs> May I say it's adorable to hear you guys nerding out about mandolins and guitars? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. I don't get to geek out about music so often nowadays. <laughs> oh, trust me, when we have a musical guest, you geek out a lot. That's why I'm an, oppor- I'm an opportunist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, as I say, I have, I have all sorts of instruments in my room which um, I can pick up and will play things on my show. And it's usually a case of, you know, if people ask for a particular instrument, then I will usually just grab it. Because um, most of the folks that tune into the show know what stuff I have. Uh-huh. So if I go like, okay, I'll play something on the ocarina or I'll play something on the guitar or I'll play something on the mandolin or whatever, it's like, cool. Um, Oh, and that's one other thing, actually, that I should mention is that every so often I also have uh, Saturn. He's actually the chairman of Buck, but he also happens to be a key musician himself and he lives not too far away from me. So every so often Ah. he comes around as well um, and he usually plays cello, which sounds wonderful when played along with the guitar. It's very nice. Oh, that's cool. He is also quite crazy, so it's always fun when he's here because crazy things happen. Like, for example, the two times so far that we sang the Flim Flam Brothers song with fake Indian accents. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God, that that is crazy. Well, you've got the opportunity in this very community. (laughs) (laughs) His flim is flam with a big flam flam, my child! (laughs) I just say that and thank you come again. <laughs> oh god. I like instead of going instead of going side to side like we were like batteries, batteries, batteries. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Um wow, I I I'm I'm a loss for words. <laughs> you know next time you have to take this out of my customer ma <laughs> Next time sketchy you have to sing it. You have to sing it in a very Scottish accent, and instead of saying cider, you have to say haggis, 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 haggis. No, 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 it'd be whiskey, 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 whiskey. Mm. No, but uh, <laughs> sketchy. Really, really. Interesting that James said you're from Scotland? I am indeed, yes. Hmm. Um, I don't hear the Scottish accent. The interesting story behind that. Um, reason is because... I didn't live in Scotland all my life. Uh-huh. Um, I actually was born in York, which is down in England. So my accent has ended up being a strange blend of English and Scottish because I lived in York for like 11 years. Then I moved up to Dumfries with my mum because uh, my mum and dad divorced. Oh, and, okay. uh, my mum moved up to Dumfries. I went with her, obviously, because you know I was dependent on her still. Uh, and then when I started university, I moved to Dundee and I stayed here since. But as a result of that, I can kind of make it go either way. Um, I have a lot of control over the way my voice sounds. So I can consciously make myself sound more Scottish if I want to. Uh-huh. Uh, for example, I could just be like, oh, well, take it shaken, not start, much money penny. Um, but at the same time, I can also sound very Yorkshire and be like, hey, up, me duck, how's it going, like? Where you off to? So. Yeah, it's, it's you know, it, I will only sound, like, very Scottish or very English if I'm consciously doing it. The rest of the time is just kind of neutral. Hmm, well, okay, because, well, we had a few um, British guests on, and, well, honestly speaking, they all have, well, they, they don't sound, how do I put this? My dad went to Scotland once and he told me that he couldn't understand a word that the Scots were saying. Did he perchance go to Glasgow? I don't really remember. It was way back when, during um, he, the 60s, I think, when he was still young. Right. And Because this is the thing. There are certain parts of Scotland where the way people speak is very unintelligible. If you go to Glasgow, for example, some of the people there have got very thick accents and the dialect, it's more the dialect rather than the, oh the my accent that <laughs> uses things. Because the dialect of the way people speak, they're like, all right, bye, how you doing? You're right, you're right. <laughs> yep, yep. And, and here, they're like, eh, I'll, I'll, I'll take an Indian one and a, a, I'll take a regular one and an Indian one and one of them ones and that. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, what the hell did you just say? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, That's what those drunk dudes in um, London sound like. 
Drunk dudes in London sound a bit different to that, I think. <laughs> but I, it, it depends on which bit of Scotland you go to as to how people will sound and as to how much trouble you'll have understanding them. I, I think and it was Glasgow. Why, and that's why you have to get drunk in Scotland, because if you don't, you will never understand anyone. <laughs> 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 I'm guessing speaking from experience then. <laughs> yeah, because well, the yes. universal language is a pint to the face. <laughs> just say, he worked in a Scottish pub, of course he's talking from experience. <laughs> yeah, the real, the real language of Scotland is a scotch. <laughs> indeed, indeed. <laughs> well, yeah. Thank God this is over Skype or there'll be beer flying at us. Oh God. <laughs> oh, okay, um, anyway, Dan... There is, there is no bar fight video game. There should be a bar fight video game. Oh, yeah, there should. <laughs> bar fight or two. Oh. Well, just, I think bar Grand fight or two later. <laughs> Grand Theft Auto 5 might have it. Oh, God. No, but anyway, Dan, any questions for Sketchy? Yeah, Sketchy. So, uh, the way you put in your music to the computer and have it streamed out to the world, uh, what is your workflow with, the, with your digitization, should I say, of the music? Yeah, uh, okay, that's... Um, it's a little bit involved but nevertheless fairly straightforward if you know what you're doing. I have a USB audio interface. Um, you're probably familiar with that sort of idea. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I've got the particular one I have is a Focusrite Scarlett 8i6, which is a wonderful piece of hardware, an expensive piece of hardware, but also a very wonderful one, quite easily the best thing I've ever used. Um, so I have that. Uh, that's plugged into my computer. My guitar gets plugged into this interface along with my mic, um, and that goes into the computer via USB. How many channels does it have? uh, Eight inputs, six outputs. Hence the name 8i6. Ah. But yeah, so I have my mic and my guitar are plugged into the 8i6. That goes into the computer via USB, Um, and it's ASIO-driven. There's an ASIO driver, so it's nice and low latency. Um... That audio then goes into Reaper, which is my digital audio workstation of choice. And that's where all the audio processing happens, like, for example, putting on reverb, uh, doing compression, all that sort of stuff, equalization, getting rid of noise. And then from there, this is where it gets interesting. I use virtual audio cable, and I have virtual audio cable takes the sound from the mix in Reaper. It takes the master mix and then the other end of that goes into open broadcaster software, which is, oh. it's a very good bit of software, actually. If you do live streams regularly and you hate Procaster, if you use live stream and you don't like their software, get OBS instead. It's a lot simpler, it's a lot more stable, and it will use a lot less CPU. I beg to um, differ because and, OBS looks complicated to me. Oh, no, no, no. No, I've tried OBS. We had, uh, we had Norman up and running with it in about 10 minutes the other day. It's cool. very simple. Yep. As long as you know what you're doing, it's simple as can be. I'm um, used to um, Wirecast, so that got me a it's, little like, it's all those features? Super, yeah. I was going to say, it's definitely not as user-friendly as Procaster. It is a little bit more involved in terms of getting it set up, but in terms of ease of use and then, you know, repeated use from then on, it's a lot more simple because it doesn't use up anywhere near as much processing power and doesn't okay. require as much of you as uh, Procaster does. So, yeah. So, the whole so the whole flow is guitar and mic into 8i6, USB into computer, um, from there into Reaper, and then Reaper into virtual audio cable, virtual audio cable to OBS, and then that goes up to the internet. Okay. Mm. That's actually That's a very rare combination, because you're the first musician I've heard of who actually uses Reaper. I thought nobody uses Reaper. Yeah, well, I mean, this is a, no. There's quite a few folk who do. Uh, Cyril the Wolf uses Reaper as well. Wait, what? Yeah, he, he told me he uses furry loops. Really? You need to listen he, to that episode again. He uses FL. Well, he, he uses FL Studio for some things, but he also uses Reaper as well. Um, I don't know whether he still uses Reaper on a regular basis, but generally speaking, I've found anyway for doing um, acoustic music. Reaper works better for me because it's laid out more like a audio recording program. FL Studio, on the other hand, I use if I'm making electronic music, which is something I do, by the way. Not a lot of people know that, but I do actually make the odd bit of electronic music. Ah. Um, 
I use FL Studio for that because it's a more logical workflow in terms of the fact that you have the pattern system and you know, just being able to lay out notes in a logical fashion with that. And Reaper isn't so friendly for doing that, but FL Studio is great for that. So it depends on what kind of music I'm making as to what software I'll use. But generally speaking, for my live songcast where I'm doing acoustic stuff, I'll use Reaper because I know how to use it. And it also has a rather brilliant routing system, I have to say. Sorry? Um, the Around routing there. matrix in Reaper. Oh, okay. Uh, it's rather brilliantly done because with its routing matrix, you can redirect audio signals from pretty much any input to any output um, at your leisure, which is a rather great feature, and I wish more programs had it. Hmm. I mean, I think when people think about that, the first thing that comes to their head is like Ableton. Yeah. Um, I used Ableton a bit. I didn't like it. Okay. Um, I just couldn't really get to grips with it, so... Uh, I went for Reaper instead because I've been using it for, and and Reaper's cheap as well. I mean, for a personal license, it's like sixty bucks, and that's like nothing. Oh, that is cheap considering what yeah. you'll get later on. Mixcraft yeah. is about the same; it's about sixty bucks as well. Yeah, I mean, heck, there's there's VSTs that are more expensive than Reaper is. <laughs> but does Reaper come with VSTs? Uh, it does come with a selection of um, plugins and stuff, and. There's also a lot of good free VSTs out there. Uh, I mean, two good examples I can think of would be Ambience, which is a free reverb plugin and in a very excellent one. Um, is, another, it only, is it only for Reaper or is it general uh, DLL? No, it's a VST. Throw it to any. Oh, it's a VST. It's a VST. Yeah. What's what um, it called again? Ambience. Ambience. Um, okay. A M B I E N C E. You know, Ambience. Um, that's a reverb plugin, as I say, and you can get that for free and use it freely. It's an absolutely excellent reverb plugin, one of the best out there. Uh, likewise, there's stuff like G Snap, that's a pitch corrector, that's another free one. Um, yeah, you essentially just need to go and look for what you need. And, you know, the fact that Reaper doesn't come with a massive selection of these VSTs. Is both a plus and a minus because it's a, it's a plus in terms of you don't you aren't getting a whole lot of extra stuff that you'll never use, but it's also a minus in terms of the fact that you then have to go out and find the stuff that you need. Mm, but then true. again, then say that well that's a plus because then you're only going to have exactly what you actually need. Okay. Um, but Reaper's plugins it does come with nevertheless some of the basic speed one like equalizers and compressors and so forth. So does it have any VST instruments for uh, MIDI input? Um, no, I don't think it does, but, uh, again, it's very easy to get a whole load of free ones from all over the place. I okay. have some on my computer, so. Mm, okay. James, do you have any questions for Sketchy? Yeah. Uh, regarding your artwork, of course, I'm the artwork guy. I have to work, uh, ask uh, things artwork-related. Uh, what's your program to go to when you are like, hey, I should make a, a drawing, I should make a picture. What, uh, what should I, what, what do you use for that? Fruity Loops. <laughs> it depends. It depends on what I'm going to do. Um, I mean, if I have, for example, already drawn up a sketch, like I'm, you know, in my sketch pad, if I've already drawn something and I'm just wanting to then uh, ink and color that, then it will probably be Inkscape that I would go for. If I want to, if I want to give it the vectored look, you know, the, the same sort of stylization as the shoe has, then I go for Inkscape. Um, if anyone out there doesn't know what Inkscape is, you need to remedy that, If, especially if you like drawing ponies and you want your stuff to look like the show does. Uh, yeah. Inkscape is hands down the best thing you will find for that. Uh, however, if, on the other hand, I am just wanting to put together a quick sketch um, or just, you know, scribble something up, then I actually use ArtRage, um, which is a program I found a while back, and... It, to me, had the best balance of features that I would really need and ones that I wanted that other programs have. For example, you know, it's, it's got layers because, well, pretty much any modern art program has got layers. It also had a few other things that I was like, I really like this or I would really want that in a program. And it doesn't have all the extra stuff that I don't need or don't want that something like, say, Photoshop has. Because I used to use Photoshop a while ago, but... Um, I kind of went off it because as a digital art program, 
Photoshop is actually pretty terrible, to my mind anyway. And the reason why I say that is because, one, it has this annoying tendency to slowly but constantly leak memory, by which I mean it just goes up and up and up in terms of how much RAM it's using until it eats all of it and your computer crashes. Mm -hmm. Um, But the other thing is, it has out of the box, like, loads and loads of filters and extensions that your average user is never going to touch. And it's like, why would you do that? You know, why have all this extra stuff that you're never going to use? Because that's just taking up extra space on your computer that, you know, you could be using for something else, which is why I say I went for something that's a bit more simplistic because they're like, I only need all of this stuff here, so I'm just going to grab this because this has got all I want, all I'm going to need. Plus it costs less. <laughs> but i got, but I got to agree with you on that because Photoshop is mainly photo manipulation. It's not really a drawing program per se. Yeah. But um, what yeah. about Illustrator? What are your thoughts on Illustrator? Um, Illustrator, being an Adobe product, suffers from some of the same problems that Photoshop has in the it will, over time, devour all the memory available. I don't know what the problem is there. I think that's just the fact that maybe Adobe prefer to code for Macs rather than Windows and don't optimize their code properly for Windows. I don't know. I generally do not like Illustrator as much. I've used it a little bit, but um, whilst it is, granted, a bit more stable than Inkscape, um, it's not as user-friendly, i found. Plus... It's also not standards compliant for saving SVG files, which is another reason not to use it. Hmm. The other reason, the reason I try to avoid Inkscape is because Inkscape no longer can push AI files out. Yeah, well, I don't know what has happened. They like probably got to fight the AI files. Maybe so. I don't know. As a, because, that's only really a problem if you have any to use AI files. And to be frank, um, really the onus should be on Adobe to properly support SVG because that's an open standard which everyone can use. Mm, And they should be embracing that and supporting it rather than being like, no, no, we need to use the law file which is AI so that we can call it the market. That's very very true. But the thing is, you know, um, I used to use Inkscape a lot until I started learning After Effects in school and then I realized After Effects does not accept SVG. Which yeah, is a really well, sad thing. Again, that's just Adobe being like, no, we don't like open standards. <laughs> no, regarding, what you said about, regarding what you said about Photoshop, I do agree with you in that, yes, if you want to make artwork with it, it's going to be nearly impossible. But if you've been using it all of your life, uh, that's like the best tool you're going to be able to use. So like, everything I draw is done in Photoshop. Like, mm-hmm. I don't use any other program. But I completely agree. True. I I would humbly disagree with you on if you've been using it all your life, you won't ever be able to use anything else. Because no, no, no. I didn't mean to say. I didn't mean to say that. I mean to say that if you've been using it all your life, you are gonna be very good with it. I don't mean to say that you won't be able to use anything else because many times I wonder. I many times I think I wonder how my artwork will look if I use Paint or Sai, or if I use Inkscape. Yeah. So it's like I, I I do wonder if I use other programs. Yeah. Yeah. Have any of you tried GIMP? Is a good one. Uh, GIMP. I've tried GIMP. I don't like it. I'll tell you why I don't like it. Um, it's yeah. primarily because it was made first for Linux and then ported to Windows. Mm. And a lot of programs, when you do that, the end result on Windows is usually subpar. Mm. Um, this is true of GIMP, unfortunately. Granted, they did improve it recently. They, they did give it a single window interface mode. That was my main gripe with it before when you, were, when you were using it on Windows. It would just make like five windows. I was like, are you kidding me? Um, now you can make it so it will only use one. But it still has an inherent problem in that it's trying to be Photoshop. And trying to be Photoshop is not something you should really be doing unless, well, or at least it's not something that you want to be looking for if you want an art program. Um, if you want an image manipulation program, which is what GIMP is, because its whole name is, you know, that's what the acronym is, it's GNU Image Manipulation Program. If that's what you want, great. Um, GIMP will do you very well as a Photoshop replacement, but it's not been made primarily with, you know, digital artists in mind. That 
those are not really its primary focus when you get right down to things, because as I say, it's trying to be Photoshop, and Photoshop was made for uh, people who do image manipulation and mm, so yeah. forth, and photo touch up the clues in the true. name. Mm, mm, but I know, I think gym and tablets don't really work well with each other. <laughs> That's another thing as well. I've experienced that myself when I was trying to use my tablet with GIMP. If I put touch, sen- if I put pressure sensitivity on, it just made my tablet get stuck in one corner. It's like, are you serious? <laughs> wow, what? You know, really? You can, you can change the pressure and what it does. So you can change like pressure sensitive effects, like jiggle rate. So if you press harder, your your brush starts to jiggle more, <laughs> and then you can yeah. set it to other things like opacity or something like that. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was cool, the actually. last time, as I say, it was the last time I tried using GIMP. If pressure sensitivity was switched on, and this is due to an inherent problem in the uh, the GTK, it's not a problem with GIMP itself, it's a problem with GTK. Oh, okay. Um, for certain pressure sensing tablets, mostly Wacoms or their clones, which is what mine happens to be, uh, if you have pressure sensing switched on, then sometimes, not always, but sometimes, um, depending on the particular tablet, your cursor will just get stuck uh, in like one corner, and it will only pick up the vertical or horizontal movement because it it maps the axes wrongly when you have pressure sensing switched on. So it just sits there and is like, <laughs> yeah, I got that before. Oh boy! And I got it when I was that, using it in After Effects. Yeah. That or the other thing that will happen is you'll just get, you know, you'll be able to move you, you'll move your stylus over the whole area of the tablet, but your cursor will only move in like one tiny little square. It's like. How am I supposed to do anything with this? <laughs> yeah, it has that. And it's literally just, someone just needs to fix GTK and it would be fine, but no one has bothered. No, everyone's just like, no, that's not really a priority, you know. When it's like, I mean, yes, it is. <laughs> kind, I mean, I don't know, because I, I used it mostly on Ubuntu, so it didn't have that much of a problem. But when it came to Windows, yeah, it did have that kind of glitch. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, it's, it's a drawing program. There's a thousand and one apps out there. So, I mean, find what you're comfortable with. With me, I'm an Illustrator guy. I, I don't know what to say. I've been brought up with Illustrator. I like Illustrator. Some of my drawings have been with Illustrator. And right now, using CS1 is no fun. <laughs> I was brought up with GIMP, actually. I, I, started with, I started with Paint.net. And then I was like, uh, okay. And then like after a while, I was like, let's try GIMP. I hated GIMP when it started, but I had to grow on it because in Ubuntu, that's the only damn thing you can use. <laughs> true, <Whoa>. true. <laughs> uh, but mo- moving on, um, I noticed here that you have a fanfic page, and you say you did write some fanfics, right? Mm-hmm. So, still doing more uh, writing? Yes, yes. Still actively writing. Currently, I have... Oh... I'm just making a mental checklist of how many fix I currently have that I'm writing. I've got... One, two... I think I currently have about five or six stories that I am actively working on currently. Mm. Uh, one of those is the sequel to the main one I have on Fimfic, which is... The, the one that I wrote that is finished is Sketchy Salad Symphony. The one that I'm currently wor- actively working on is Sketchy Salad Serenata, which is its sequel. Um... I have two projects I'm actively working on with my fellow writer from Mass Britannia, both of which are Britannia-themed. I have a third one I started recently, which is a um, it's featuring a character of a friend of mine who's also from the Mass Britannia team. And I also have another one, which is a story I began writing based on a character I conceptualized a week while back. Oh. So I'm keeping busy there. Mm, so the the yep. thing I'm seeing here is your last update was July twentieth of July. So I can't wait to see more of it because mm, because like I told James, I read some of his fic and it was really good. And seeing here that you have uh, Octavia, Luna, Celestia, and OC, this will be interesting. Yo. Um... I mean, this is the thing. Celestia and Luna play... They don't play a major part in those stories, but they're definitely a part of them. Their their influence is definitely felt. And I have to say the princesses are probably my favourite characters to write after the main characters that are in those stories. I absolutely love exploring their relationship and the, the way 
you know, the way they play off each other, their the dynamics of their relationship, the way they relate to other ponies and so forth, I absolutely love writing them. Mm, okay, well, I have to take a read because I read James and I'm reading a few fics right now and looking at this, I do love the Octavias. Thankfully, yes. you did read the, the one fanfic that I am actually very proud of. Uh, but no, no, you didn't read Claro de Luna yet, right? Not yet. I, I'm just reading one thing at a time. And the <laughs> Luna, what was it again? Uh, Claro de Luna. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to read that one next, I think, because, well, it has Luna and it has Octavia. And I, think, I, think Octavia I, know where, I think I know where the title came from. I was going to say, speaking of Octavia, something I have to mention here, because this is another special little thing, is that when James was heading back to Spain, he actually had made a paper craft Octavia, and he was like, she will not survive the trip if I take her back to Spain on my plane and so forth. He was like, so would you look after her? And so I said I would. So I actually have still a, a little paper craft Octavia sat on my windowsill. Oh, uh, <laughs> Ooh, which, which, which James I, put I, together. I am so happy you still keep that and you take care of that because it, it literally I had no space left on my luggage <laughs> and I am like who is going to be better with who, who is she going to be better with than with, with Sketchy because he likes to take exactly. so much so yes. there you have it mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you didn't know what, what was what I was I going to pull out uh, pull out of the box when <laughs> when I took yeah, to your house I was like what has he got here and then when you brought out that I was like <gasps> Oh my yeah, God. <laughs> I just love that anticipation. That's the second time I do it because I open the. Bo- it's a Yu-Gi-Oh metal box. <laughs> it's good. It's sturdy for when bringing very fragile stuff. Yep. So people have no idea what I'm going to pull out. So when I always, if, pu- if, I always pull up a, a, a pony paper craft, and if, they're like, <gasps> "Had I been capable, or if I was capable of it, I probably would have done like the fluffle buff gasp when I saw that." <laughs> yeah, <it'll- laughs> Thing, but I can't do it. There's, yeah, there's one of the guys on the one of the girls on the Aspartame team, though. She does a perfect rendition of it. Uh, Beth, she just she can do it every time. It's brilliant. It's, uh, sometimes we'll just be there talking, and then we'll just like, "Would you make me some breakfast?" And she'll just go. <laughs> 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 no, but that box. Girl. Seriously, you're right about that box. I mean, you could transport antimatter, and that thing will be safe. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I want to know more about your work with EFN. If if I remember right, you you were there from the beginning. Yeah, I was actually I was around with EFN before EFN was actually a thing. Because um, this is the thing: every network started off as every radio, and that was quite a few years back. It was like roughly around the beginning of season two, I think, that they started. I can't remember the exact time, but it started out as kind of a bit of a. A slightly sillier thing, actually, initially. They were just like, you know, we, we should put together a podcast and, like, you know, we should do something that's a bit more... Uh, and I say it was a, it had slightly silly beginnings, but nevertheless, the game with it was, you know, let's put together something that's a bit more thought out and a bit more professional than some of the other stuff that's out there currently. Because their thought at the time was, you know, some of the stuff that's out there at the moment is maybe not all that good. Um, or is, you know, is it, there's nothing there for the folks who are maybe after something that's a bit more, I don't know, mature or grown up. I mean, I, I hesitate to use either term, but I mean, that's still the sort of thing that went into it. So um, they started putting together ideas and so forth. And then I was approached by uh, one trick. She was like, um, would you like to be our first interviewee for the initial podcast? I was like, sure. So the very first Air Free Radio podcast, if you go all the way back to the very, very first one, their special guest is none other than myself. Um, huh. Where it went from there afterwards, it was a case of, as they started building up in terms of content and so forth, and they started wanting to have like regular streams, I had already at the time been doing a regular stream. Well, I said... It, it, I say regular, it was basically a case of every so often I would just like, you know, right, I'm just going to stream me playing songs for a while. And then after a while they were like, uh, would you actually like to make your stream a regular thing on our site? Because you will get more exposure that way and also that will help us. So I was like, sure. So all things considered, I was probably the very first actual regular program that got broadcast on every network right back when it was still every radio and then when it was making its transition to becoming a more all-encompassing thing. Um, 
My show is probably, I'd say, the longest running one they have, which has been there almost from the very beginning, and I don't think I've ever missed more than one or two weeks at a time where I've not done a show, and it's either been because of illness or work or going to a con. Ah, that, that sounds awesome. And yep. I, I do remember um, Final Draft being on and telling us that he started out during the beginning of Season 2 after Lunar Eclipse and saying that we should do our own show and let's do it and doing it. Yep, that was pretty much how it went down. I also remember that one of the intentions behind the creation of Everfree Network was that so they could give good coverage of pony conventions for those who couldn't go. Like, they could either yeah, stream was... it or record it and later post it on YouTube. Yeah, that was something that kind of happened along the way, I think. It was an idea that was formed along the way. It was like, you know, we should also see about if we could if we could do this. You know, it was a, it was a case of... The more technical-minded people among every network were like, you know, could we, you know, would we be able to do this? How would we go about doing this? How much would it cost? And then when they, you know, they took a look at it and they're like, you know, we could do this. We could actually go and we could do this. We could we could stream these cons and provide coverage to people who are at home and haven't been able to go. So I think the very first time they did that was uh, one of the earlier Brony cons. I don't remember exactly. It was either Brony con or it was, Northwest was the first one they streamed. No, it was Brony con January 2012 when uh, that was the it, guests yeah. the guests were Nicole Oliver, Andrea Liefman, and that Ashley Ball. Oh, yeah, they were yeah. streaming that one for the first time. Brony con New York. Yeah. This was with, if I remember right, hosting the panel was Final Draft, Apple Cider, and Chef Andy. Yeah, correct. Yes, they were the three cars in the panel. Yeah, this yeah. is one that he, looked, he was looking for trouble because he said he did that line where someone asked who's best pony. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, we clearly said at the beginning, Twilight Sparkle <laughs> is best pony. Was it that one? Yeah. No, I that one so. that was... Um, uh, I that, was winter, s- that was a Winter Bronicon, I remember. Really? Yeah, I thought that one was winter, winter um, the second one. The What was it? Uh, there's the Winter Brony Con with the uh, Bronyville. I thought there was one, the other one, the Brony Con Fire. That was yeah, Brony Con was yeah, yeah, that that Summer 2012. They streamed, I think. Yeah, yeah that was the second that was Brony Con they streamed Summer. where it got nicknamed Brony Con. Mm. No, but still, um, you you yeah, were there from the beginning, for, and that sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah it's, for the people who it's, are, been an, it's been quite a trip seeing how over time. It's grown from being just a group of maybe like seven or eight people. It's grown over time, and now there's, I think there's somewhere in the region of 50 people are either involved directly or indirectly with every network, either in terms of them being people who are staff or editors or contributors or, you know, various other roles. There's so many people involved in it now. I mean, I, I used to know everyone that was involved with every network, you know, on a fairly personal level, and I still know like a good number of the main staff. I know, I know draft reasonably well. I know one trick quite well because I've been friends. With, I was this is the thing. It was because of one trick that I got involved with Every Network because I knew her quite well, well before Every ever became a thing. She was one of the first people that I connected with in the fandom. Uh-huh. Um, one trick, basically. I mean, this is the thing. I, I knew one trick before she was one trick, basically, yeah. because she used to go by her, her primary. Uh, nickname that she went on on the chat networks was actually Octavia <laughs> because she related with that pony quite well. Um, so I, I got to know her when that was still her primary name that she was known by, and then she came up with the one trick I invented and made more use of that. But I knew her before she even was doing that, so that's going back quite a long way. But it's mm-hmm. because of her that I got involved with Therapy Network, and uh, yeah, the rest is history, as they say. Mm. And it was such a wonderful history. Started off small and look where you are now. Woo-hoo. Yep, fully registered yep. company. Indeed. Yep. Yeah. But talking about conventions, the last one you went was Buck, right? Yes. How was that? It was awesome. It was so much fun. Um, it was bigger than last year because we had access to the whole venue. We had we were at the Bridgewater Hall. Last time we'd been there, they'd been renovating the main auditorium, so we didn't have access to all the facilities available. This year, of course, the renovations were complete, so we had access to the main auditorium, which is absolutely huge. 
um, you can fit. I think uh, our capacity for buck was a maximum of somewhere around 1,500 or 1,600, it may have been. So, and I think the actual number of attendees was around 1,100 and something. Uh So there were a lot of people there this year, almost double what we'd had last year. Oh, that's cool. So there were loads and loads of people. Um, I had a lot of fun. I was... Uh, a guest again. I performed at the, the Lunar Eclipse, which was their uh, their concert thing during the con. Um, I didn't perform during the Summer Sun celebration. That was like a, the big concert before the con, and that was really amazing. Um, quite the yeah, experience. that was like huge. I looked at that. I, looked, I saw the videos from it, and it was like I thought they were having like I thought they had some big huge sponsor from some beer company or something. But no, it was all theirs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was it. Was all paid for by uh, by uh, con funds, but uh, yeah, we had uh, the Summer Sun celebration. That was fantastic. There was a con itself, which was a lot of fun, I'd say, and it was greatly facilitated by having a larger venue to hold it in. Um, I was on a number of panels. I was on a writers panel. I was on a musicians panel. Uh, I was on a panel for the Tumblr. That was a good lot of fun, actually. The Tumblr panel was great because what we did was we had this we had a video presentation that we put together for it which was this massive parody of this day area mm. which went down quite well and then oh, yeah. also i was hidden off stage and we had actually one of the characters from the blog uh the clarion cult who's this uh hacker character that we came up with for various reasons she turned up for the panel um, because I can do her, I do her voice. So she turned up um, with her picture appearing on the screen, and then her voice coming on and just being all like, "Hello!" And it was so much fun because <laughs> she was just she basically had this back and forth with Hazel, who's you know the, the co-author, um, and answered questions and stuff. It was it was great. Oh my, that, that is, is awesome! Sounds oh. like a very interactive and fun panel. So did you, like, uh, bring your laptop and plug in the VST and do that on the spot? Yeah, basically, well, I borrowed I borrowed Vixler's laptop, actually. Um, oh, okay. And, and I had my ATX6 with me, so I was hidden under the stairs at the sound desk. So I had my, uh, my sound card, my mic, and I plugged that into the laptop, and then the output from the sound card went into the, you know, the actual mixing desk. Okay. Um, so I could hear everything that was going on. I couldn't necessarily see everything that was going on there, but I was basically, I ran both, I made Clarion's face appear, made her expression change, and I also obviously provided her voice. Mm. Thinking about coming to Malaysia anytime soon? I don't have any plans to, unfortunately. That would require me to have time and money, and unfortunately all I have at the moment is a lot of time and not a lot of money. You know what, Dan? We should just collect the money and go to Buck. Next year, Buck. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and be on Buck next year. Uh, Sketchy, you have to get uh, get me in touch with the guys who do the panels because I wanna try and do something like uh, speed drawing. Uh, re- movie. No, it's like movie references in MLP and kind of like joining it with uh, movies late and talk about you know all what? the movie references that have been in, in MLP. What? Yeah, James, if you come up with a good panel idea like that or something similar, if you can come up with something good that people would want to see and you put that forward to them, then they will take that on board and they will consider that. Because if you have a good idea of something that people would like to see, then they will most likely happily invite you to come and do that. In awesome. what, uh, what what do I have to do to prepare to to prepare that, uh, for that? Because it's like, do I have to write a paper, a PF... Uh, a basically, just, just put together, like, um, a short description of what you'd want to do and, like, send that on to Saturn or someone and let them know, you know, let them know your ideas. Um, and if they like it, then i say they'll probably just say, yeah, we would like you to come and do that. But, I mean, I'll put it this way. If you put together um, just, like, a short description of what you'd want to do and, like, the main points of what you'd be doing with it... Um, and then either toss that over to me, or I think you actually have Saturn on your contact list, do you not? I do, because I, 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 yeah. I got it after the just, Candice T3 uh, Yeah, just him. pester him then. <laughs> just pester him with your ideas. <laughs> no, Seriously, he, he, get he doesn't mind being okay. there. No, he won't. Saturn doesn't mind this sort of stuff. He likes being no, there. No, no, no. Thing. 
You know what, Dan? I'm being silly. I'm being silly. I will. I will write a paper. I will put on a document saying the ideas and the and the themes and more or less the time that it will take. Like you know, presentation, Q and A section, uh, how it will tie with the Tumblr pony stuff, and then yeah. uh, present it to him. Yeah. You you know That's what, what Dan? We we should do that. We should do that and go to Buck as how to start a podcast within thirty minutes. <laughs> It can be like we are, today. We talk about modern movie references. Doctor James Cork, PhD, on the line with us. Doctor James Cork, PhD. No, I'm, I'm being serious. I'm being serious. You, you know, we've done this for almost a year now, and if I'm right, Buck will be next year around the same time when it happened, and we will be around two and more, a half years maybe. So we yeah, could possibly. So we could possibly do that, like how to successfully do a podcast for two and a half years without being popular. <laughs> Yeah, okay. it's it's considered successful. <laughs> well, we are still alive, and we got James Cork and Sketchy Sounds on, so I guess we're okay. <laughs> you say that, like, you know, you, you say my name like I am some sort of like in, important like guy, and I'm like I'm not, not, nobody. Do I, you're important to us. I am super tiny, small, and significant, but I do my best. To try and You're get bigger. See, that's what matters. Your so that's what matters. Yeah, that's what Where my mother says. Or at least what she used to say. She doesn't say that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Where are your friends? We don't care. You came in 50th place. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Did you just did you just quote MLP to me? <laughs> yep, I did. I think you did. Wow. Oh, boy. You've been Applejacked. <laughs> I love Applejack. Oh, Applejack. <laughs> Yeah, she's the second best pony. If I remember, right, Kitsune. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Uh, well, if I remember, Kitsune said that Applejack was his favorite, and Rarity was worst pony. No, uh, he's a, he, he's uh, he's a joker. He actually likes both of them. Uh, he likes both Applejack and Rarity, but because I am such a Rarity fanboy, <laughs> he he pokes fun at me all the time, like saying, "No, Rarity, she's like Cthulhu with he is with tentacles coming out of her face." And I was like, yeah, right now, Kitsune is listening to this, and he's like, "James, you're gonna get it." <laughs> oh, I, I wish I could just get him on because you you guys spent a really awesome. I'm going to show you pictures of Rarity getting trashed. <laughs> and I'm like, oh no, please, I enjoy those pictures way too much. Don't show them to me. <laughs> uh, but no, uh, but, but it's true. Oh my. Uh, I think we're running a bit too long. And if I remember right, Sketchy, you have a party, right? Ah, well, it's not so much a party, but I do have guests. Ah, uh, okay. So uh, if we got nothing more, we, we should. Hosting a house party? No, I just have guests around, you know, friends. I'm socializing. <laughs> okay, it's a thing that they... people do when they're not on the internet. Norman mentioned party, so I was like, party? <laughs> fun, fun, fun! <laughs> oh, exactly. No, no, no let, let's, let's, um, I think we could end this. You know, will there be cake, will there be games, will there be balloons, will there be... <laughs> Never mind. Nope, nope. all sorts of fun, <laughs> darling. <laughs> Ah, my heart! <laughs> oh, you can take it anymore. Anyway, um, I guess we, <laughs> I guess we can end this. And that was our guest, Sketchy Sounds. Thanks for coming on, Sketchy. It's been a pleasure. So, where can they find you on the net? Okay, there are assorted places you can find me. Uh, I am on Twitter as Sketchy Sounds. That's with an underscore. Uh, I am on YouTube as... It's a bit of an odd one. I made the channel ages ago, so the channel name is odd. It's A5HF0X. Though if you search for Sketchy Sounds on YouTube, you'll probably find me fairly quickly. I am on Film Fiction as Sketchy Sounds. Uh, that's with a space in it. Um, I am on DeviantArt as Sketchy Sounds without a space in it. And, of course, um, I do my show regularly on Everfree Network. That's www.everfree.net every Thursday. And I can also be found on Tumblr at sketchysounds.tumblr.com. That's without a space or underscore anything. And, of course, I also run Ask Britannia, which is just askbritannia.tumblr.com. Ask Britannia is always one word, no underscores or hyphens or anything. All right, yeah. yeah, that's the confusing part about Tumblr. Is, that, is there a hyphen? Is there an underscore? Is there a yeah. dot? Is there a... I forgot! Anyway, I'll just add that in the show notes for to make things easier. So, yeah. 
Anyway, thanks, Ketchi. You heard way you can find him. Links will be provided in the show notes. So anyway, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is shoutouts. And my sh- first shout-out goes to you, Sketchy. Thanks for coming on and, well, sharing your stories with us. No problem, mate. It has been a lot of fun. Well, I, I hope you were not offended slash annoyed by us. No, no, not at all. And I hope you weren't offended or annoyed by me. Oh, no. I, I a little could. intimidated, but nah, not offended. <laughs> nope, nope. And uh, thanks, James, for coming on and, well, ah, providing welcome. the smarts. Oh, no, I, even if I brought the silly. <laughs> uh, I think that brought that, that one in. That is nothing from Chris Pricking's CCB. Ouch, my heart. Ooh. <laughs> I'm not I really... I wouldn't mind spreading the silly over you, Svelte. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> oh. So, anyway, then... Do like a one-man radio drama. Get in touch with Scribbler. Can I do not mind spreading me either? <laughs> uh, I'll be up for that. My heart. <laughs> I'm sorry, no, but we're giving you so much you're going to have to edit out. Nope, nope, that's, go all, that's all going in. That's all going in. <laughs> Norman with a couple of scissors. Yeah, this is how... <laughs> snip, snip, snip. Uh, but anyway, Dan, what about you? Shout out. Oh, well, shout out to both of you here and uh, Norman for yep, the usual deal every week. And, uh, yeah, that's basically it. I don't have many people to shout out to. Yeah, with your current schedule, I don't think you'll be thankful to anybody. Is there, is there an opposite of a shout out? Like, uh, I don't know, uh, shout, well, shout, shout in or something? No, no, there, there's a thing that I listen to a podcast, and the opposite yeah. of a shout out is an FU. No, the, the, the opposite of a shout out is a screen internally. <laughs> no, <laughs> From what I heard is they say FU. It's an FU. So, who do you want to send an FU to? Jeez, where do I start? (laughs) Never mind then. (laughs) So, James, anyone to shout out to? I want to give a shout out to my good old friend, uh, Jay Van Esbroek, who is now having an awesome time at the Sacramento Brony uh, uh, meetup. It's... uh, it's a small meetup that's happening right now in California, and it's really small, but those are kind of the, like, the kind of events that usually you enjoy the most. Hey, James, James, so, James, you say yeah, small? Like the Expo. Y- you know who's going there? Um, no, who was going there? Dusty and Apple Cider. Ah, was he? Oh, that's cool. Oh, God, you say small, oi. What's big for you, big man? Things come in small packages, man. If thirty-five <laughs> people are there, you can't call it big. Oh, it is. Well, you know they don't consider themselves big either, so they, that's cool. Mm, true, true. But yeah, no, it's still... size is relative. To them. <laughs> yeah, everything is relative. Nothing is absolute. Oh God, I'm gonna have a nose bleed soon. It's a good thing that you don't care about size, belt. <laughs> yeah, Alpha Brony taught me that. It's not you do with it that counts. <laughs> Exactly. What's inside that counts? <laughs> Dear Lord. Oh my god. PG-13 scraping onto the rated R. Uh, <laughs> anyway, sketchy. Who, who, who? R for revolutionary. Oh god, sketchy. Shout out now. <laughs> More like R for... <sighs> <laughs> Oh. And then they shout and not growl out. Okay, <laughs> on a serious note, uh, I would like to give a shout out uh, one to the folks at Everfree Network for you know continuing to uh, allow me to do my show like every single week and have fun and just for being fantastic people in general. Oh. Um, and also a shout out to my good friend James Cork here for being an awesome guy and oh, thank uh, you. for. For helping me out with my donation drive thing by uh, volunteering to do art for people, um, hey, and yep, yeah, and finally to you guys as well uh, here at uh, MBS for having me on and uh, providing an entertaining couple of hours. Sure, no oh, problem. You're we're, okay. we're glad to entertain you for a couple of hours. We hope you'll be entertained more in the future. But hey, a couple of hours is okay with us. Yeah, you want a good laugh, just ring us up. I'm sure you would like to entertain me some more. <laughs> uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm, glad I'm, not, I'm glad I'm not a Pegasus right now because... <laughs> because your free trial is over, sir. <laughs> be happy that you're not a unicorn either or else you will be spraying all over the place with magic. Indeed. 
Anyway, like your free trial has ended. To continue, please enter your credit card number below. Oh no! So anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbshow at gmail dot com. And if you would like to email us personally, you can reach me at norman at mbshow dot com and Daniel at mbshow dot com. You can also reach us on Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS Show. Contact Tweety Bot for news on what's going on with the show, editing, and just general banter. And also contact me if you want to reach me on Twitter. I am at Norman Sanzo. I post stuff about food, cartoons, toys, and whatever tickles my fancy. And what about you, Daniel? Yeah, but if you get a kick out watching people suffer, then you'll get a kick out of following my Twitter account. Go follow Saint Pinky S C P I N K I E on Twitter. Uh, I, I recently read that you don't like the new iPhone 5C. No, it's not that I don't like it. I just want to see it drop tested. <laughs> it's nice colors. I gotta say it's nice. I gotta say it's nice colors, but I want to see something break. <laughs> <laughs> see, it's been it's been ages since I last smashed something. Oh boy! Like, can someone buy me an iPhone wow. 5C to smash? Oh no! <laughs> anyway, oh. James, what, what about you? You you have the tweeters, right? Uh, you can find me in Twitter at James Cork all together. No, James lower dash Cork uh, on Twitter. You can find me on jamescork.dvnr.com. And you can feel free to check my Tumblr pony uh, blog, askmovieslate.tumblr.com. I'll add that in the show notes. And if I remember right, your sketchy sound is at sketchy sounds, right? Yes, sketchy underscore sounds. Uh, so that's sketchy sounds with an underscore in it is my Twitter um, the, in, and I'm also on Tumblr as well. And I'll, I'll various in places. It's I'll, all in the show notes. Okay, I'll add the show notes. It's basically sketchy underscore sounds. And underscore yep. is the underlying space bar that Dan doesn't like. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. So anyway, and also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes at Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. Links will be provided in the show notes. And let's petition Microsoft to remove the underscore button from the keyboard. Oh, no, they won't. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been Daniel Anthony. I have been James Cork. And I have been Sketchy Sounds. And Sketchy, you said you will be playing us some music, so take us out! Okie dokie. So, this is uh, an old favourite from Season 1. Tomorrow spring is here Pinging on the southern birds A Pegasus cloud begins Clearing all the gloomy skies To let the sun shine in With the clouds and we melt the white snow When the sun comes up its warmth and beauty will glow Winter wrap up, winter wrap up Let's finish our holiday cheer Winter wrap up, winter wrap up Tomorrow spring is here Winter wrap up, winter wrap up Cause tomorrow spring is here Cause tomorrow spring is here Little critters hibernate Under the snow and ice We wake up all the sleepy heads So quietly and nice We help them gather up their food Fix their homes below We welcome back the southern birds So the families can grow Winter 
up, we need to wrap up. Let's finish our holiday cheer. We need to wrap up, we need to wrap up. Tomorrow spring is here. We need to wrap up, we need to wrap up. Cause tomorrow spring is here. Cause tomorrow spring is here. No easy task to clear the ground. Plant our tiny seeds. With proper care and sunshine, everyone it feeds. Apples, carrots, celery stalks, cauliflowers too. We must work so very hard, it's just so much to do. Winter wrap up, winter wrap up, let's finish our holiday cheer. Winter wrap up, winter wrap up, cause tomorrow spring is here. Winter wrap up, winter wrap up, cause tomorrow spring is here. Cause tomorrow spring is here Now that I know what they all do I have to find my high place Now with all of my heart Tough task ahead I face How will I do without my magic? Have the earth pony away I wanna belong so I must Do my best today Do my best today Wrap up, let's finish our holiday cheer. Winter wrap up, winter wrap up, cause tomorrow spring is here. Winter wrap up, winter wrap up, cause tomorrow spring is here. Cause tomorrow spring is here. Cause tomorrow spring is here. Give me a second, guys. Um, Dan, your connection was up. Dan? Hello. Yeah. I think I lost Dan. Oh, no. Maybe he wasn't the real Dan and he got sent back to the mirror pond. His connection was oh. derping. That's why I was wondering. Yeah. No, it should. No, what if he actually was a Colton? Well. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> well, okay, he's gone. Uh, we'll, we'll just let him be <laughs> and let's move on. You say that so nonchalantly. You're uh, like, okay, he's gone. Oh, well, he's, he's saying uh, it's here, but he, he must have dropped from the call. His internet must have had nerves. Oh, rough. That's not good. Yeah, connection. His sight is really bad. Okay, let's well, see. Well, this is what we have post-production for. Indeed. I wish we were live, so this would go all on tape. <laughs> yeah, I think I missed something, didn't I? Yep. Welcome back. Welcome back. But you're still derping. You're, you have dots on your faces. I was born to derp. Indeed. Oh yeah! He didn't choose the derp life. The derp life cures him. Oh yeah! <laughs> indeed, indeed, indeed. <laughs> Those who never knew what went wrong. Okay, so um, we finish. Derp needs to be in a video with that. Derp needs to be in a video with that. I didn't choose the derp life. The derp life chose me. <laughs> it's this a derp is a community life. service message brought to you by Derp Life Insurance. <laughs> it's a derp life. <laughs> For you us. only live this once. This is the life, life for us. If you join in today, you get a full protection against flying pianos, Dun. falling muffins, cracked floors, and rain clouds. <laughs> okay, so we've asked question number two, and let's move on to question number three. <coughs> three, two, one. And the last one is, what do your but family... It resulted in the... Like, uh, yeah, I yeah. am. I kind of do that little moment to look at this. Then your connection is breaking up. Never mind, continue. Okay. What's your status bar on your Skype thingy? What color is it? Yellow? White. White? Huh. Strange. It says unknown. Unknown. Okay. It sounds like you're really far off using a really bad mic. Yep. I'm really far off from you, Amy. I'm really far off from all of you. But, uh, you know what I mean. Is, but I, I paid 200 bucks for this mic, so it's damn good. Yeah, but you you don't sound like you're using a two hundred bucks mic. Uh, internet no connection. <laughs> internet connections. So anyway, I'm um, restarting in three, two, one. So uh, this is a old favorite of well, probably everyone in the fandom from season one. <laughs> So, guys, I'm going to restart this because I wasn't recording, so one moment. Okay. <laughs> Perfect outtake. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. <laughs>